I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, it's Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Got a really fun video with the Vampire 2 on the map Atlantic for clan battle season. And it's pretty awesome. And it's just sheer brute force of uh, this strategy we're about to talk. But before we begin, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support. At 4,000 subs, do another premium giveaway. As always, thanks for those supporting the channel and uh, learning something at the same time while having fun. So let's talk about that. The Vampire and uh, 2 is a very, very powerful destroyer. And again, this is a, a great way to learn the aspects of roll destroyers. I like talking about it. But let's talk about the basic strategy of the Atlantic. We have a 7 versus seven in clan battle starting on the southeastern side um basic initial push uh is pretty standard for bravo and alpha each team gets one cap right there but the biggest one is the contesting cap like what are we going to do about that and this is where i've only seen the first time in my personal opinion seeing brute force uh a push right into uh charlie to overwhelm it so the first thing we're gonna do is have a vampire with five kilometer hydro go in and literally keep hydro for the whole area and cap it right away and then you can obviously egress out of the area if you need to uh, that's why i always said if you're going to do something as a destroyer player make sure you have an exit strategy just in case you were caught in the open the other aspect we're going to have the two uh cruisers per plow right here we'll have one battleship in reserve while the other battleship pushes into support and that is exactly kind of how this uh style of gameplay will go and we're going to see if overwhelming brute for sheer force will actually happen if you watch the when you watch the replay the uh what actually turns out happening is they'll have one cruiser back here another cruiser in support so far back and then, of course, the other battleship, I'm sorry, the destroyer will try to cap. And I think, honestly, that personally, this doesn't seem like a good, I mean, covering fire setup because the battleship's too far back to be any of a use. Obviously, Alpha is taken with one destroyer and one cruiser and then another battleship in support. So they're contesting this one. We'll have Bravo. And it's kind of a stalemate at Alpha Bravo. So it's a 1v1. And it's really down the player's skill at that point. But really, the overwhelming is how do we take Charlie right off the bat. The first thing is we want to eliminate as a good destroyer player, cap and then kill destroyers, right? So that's the first thing we do, we eliminate this one destroyer, which turns out to be a gearing and you have to select the right arsenal for it because I've talked about my previous video, the gearing has that armor plating in the central portion of the ship that does shatter a lot of vampire HE shells. So you got to switch to AP and know when to use that sparingly. The other aspect is um, we also have these uh, cruisers that are pesky right here, and we want to make sure that we keep a check on them. And really the biggest thing, and I think the, the issue that this team had was they were just overwhelming uh, or being focus fired by all of our ships, and they were overwhelmed at that point. For example, like one cruiser ended up being over here. We just got torpedoed, destroyed, and focused fire down. This other d cruiser, radar cruiser, although great cruiser, I'm sorry, radar cruiser abilities, unfortunately was not in a position to allow them to support anything, especially when you have four ships firing at one it's really really diff difficult and of course the battleship was too far back to be provide any kind of fire support so you pretty much had this um i'll, I'll move all the arrows out of the way so you can see it uh this is kind of what actually transpired here you had the battleship um kind of too far back to be any kind of use or support yeah, these two cruisers here, we shoot on one-on-one -on -one right there. They, We have our two uh, cruisers in support with a battleship in tow. Battleship hangs back here to support in case there is a massive push. And then, of course, this is kind of what it turned out looking like. And uh, you'll see, but just based on the replay, how it actually uh, perspired. But this is kind of... Um, the initial setup of just having overwhelming firepower and keeping this battleship in the center here gives you still another set of guns to fire into Charlie or hold somebody back here. You also have the cruisers, you know, being able to support uh, any kind of uh, aggression right into the Charlie. And then, of course, you have uh, me as a destroyer player being able to egress the area at will if I need to. If one, go take on the destroyer. If also, I can egress back out or egress into the east here and just continuously harass whatever's here and just keep coming back, coming back coming back back and forth back and forth until we take charlie and you're going to notice the alpha team will probably overwhelm bravo and we were able to win the game with just one cap because we were just we had the caps right off the bat initially pretty quickly and then, then we were able to eliminate one ship at a time and if you take out four ships your points stick up very very quickly and that's kind of like the strategy we saw there let me know your thoughts about this like what how this team actually plays out what kind of strategy initial push you saw in the atlantic and this is what it looks like when you do an overwhelming kind of push into charlie with the vampire too so let's take a look at it don't push, don't push. Don't All right, see. we're in the map Atlantic here, and we already oh, see the enemy has deployed those pesky minefields. And, and these minefields are very, very deadly, uh, especially in clan battle season, that really do stop and halt a push sometimes, yeah. or just take distract a player because you're focusing on not trying to take yeah. unnecessary damage as a destroyer player. And you're always having, again, use that right mouse button to free look, look around, maneuver your ship while keeping your guns facing in the appropriate direction. And you can see, as a good destroyer player, I've got my RPF up, and I'm okay, spotting where my potential uh, threat will be. Keep oh, my guns facing in that. 
that. Now, the cool thing about the Vampire, the guns are always 360 facing forward, so that's a good thing uh, for the back turret, 360 turret. The front turrets obviously are more of the front leaning, so you're always nose in to the ob objective. Noticing I'm firing uh, AP rounds into the gearing to maximize the uh, penetration and damage I can get. And you see that it has a lot, a lot of damage. It does a lot of damage, especially on the uh, gearing right there. And we got hydro up, we got the smoke up over radar, and boom, splash one. He goes down. That's just brute sheer force of just bullying the DD right there. And I believe the Gampire does a very, very good job of doing that. You can see it there, right there. Um, the uh, destroyer player role is a very, very effective with the uh, vampire kind of style gameplay where you're just going in there, uh, capping that area, and using hydro, using smoke, go undetected and just eliminating the threat right off the battlefield right there. So I really do like the Vampire in that regard. The only downside, it doesn't have any heals. But of course, we have this is a clan battle, so you can see right there, someone popped the consumable for Team Heals, and that actually changes the nature of the entire gameplay of destroyers that don't have heals now, because now we all have heals, and that is a very, very powerful thing as a gunboat DD main. So... Right off the bat, we've got Alpha, I'm sorry, Bravo and Charlie. You notice the enemy team is trying to push. And again, there is a minefield out there at, uh, you could see at the uh, Alpha Bravo kind of sector, the little channel there. That does slow somewhat of an advance. Now we've got RPF pointing in the northern direction. So I do know that there is a cruiser player or another threat out here. Again, situation awareness, I believe, is a key paramount to knowing everything, to, to allowing yourself to make the appropriate decisions right here. And really, I think the enemy team is just too far out of position to really be any effective, right? Effect, or being effective right now at this point because the Marseille is too out of position, uh, being focused fire from three different angles. The Petro is just not in position to radar or support or even use the radar. Um, and the Petro has only about a 19 second ish radar, so not as or maybe 12 or 12 to 19, I forgot. But if you build for it, you can get the 19. So not very, very effective to support the uh, the the uh, destroyer, I would say, counter destroyer player right here. Now I uh, I just elect to keep firing because even though my smoke goes away, I just want to put and put as much damage and destruction I can on the Marseille, get him out of the game. You can do this a little bit more in, ra in competitive because obviously there's not like a thousand players out there and normally in randoms and of course you don't have the, the pesky submarines or just uh, CVs and, and carrier based airplanes spotting you all the time. So really. I think this is one of the best uh, fun times for me as a gunbow DD main is just constantly running around with my head cut off and just constantly firing and open firing and causing fires as much as I can. So he takes a shot, we slam on the brakes and juke away, and there's that counter uh, shot technique right there. Take a look at that. And, of course, we're going to also continue to see, uh, try to remaneuver, reposition, and spot. So let's, let's take a look at the repositioning here. All right, now we got a better position. We just basically doing single launch torpedoes right in the Marseille, and I like the fact that the Vampire has these uh, single launch torpedoes. They go out to 12 kilometers now, better than the Daring does. Unfortunately, you lose one rack of torpedoes for the uh, increased reload of the gun power. So I like the gun power because it starts a lot of fires, kind of like the Daring style, British style kind of, uh, uh, I would say, fire starting abilities, rapid reload. Also, the AP is very deadly on the British side as well. So Vampire 2 is kind of like that, deer, that daring kind of gameplay, but just faster guns, one less rack of torpedoes. Really, really awesome. Play with play how you want it with that you kind of style of gameplay, but I really uh, enjoy the Vampire 2 for that effective reason. Uh, I do believe it's available in the Research Bureau if you want to get it. So pretty, pretty awesome. That with the Druid as well. So looks like we may get some nice uh, hits right here, and uh, hopefully this might secure it do we get another one and boom there you go splash two man we are just rocking and rolling with the vampire two very very era, powerful area denial for uh, a destroyer dd main player now you can notice that the smoke screen that i launched right here the downside is when there's no targets around and you're moving around at full speed um they pre anybody can see the smoke moving around it's like a smoke cloud that's just constantly moving around the map now you know exactly where this destroyer player is that's the one downside and you can't turn it off so once it's once it's popped it goes till it runs out of time now, the cool thing about it is it is the uh, crawling smoke, which means that you can move at uh, quarter speed in the last fairly long amount of time, and you're basically moving and shooting uh, all the whole time. So it's really, really awesome, very powerful. Of course, new players, if you don't understand that, it's a very powerful technique. I've seen people use the vampire's crawling smoke with Schlieflins and secondary ships to allow them to stay within that smoke while moving, while uh, just hunting down and mowing down somebody uh, on your flank, or just, just pushing an entire flank with a bunch of secondary uh, ships. And it's pretty awesome, pretty cool when you see a lot of... Uh, clans do that out there we're gonna go ahead and help start a fires on the petro right here and get as much firepower as we can we've got a heals and we've got our health back 
He fires AP right into us. Again, what I say about angling poo nannies, if your angle AP really is hard to hit a ship with, HE is better for angled ships. HE stands for hit everything, and I like to use that, and that's what I'm doing right there. See, I'm using HE. I'm starting some fires. He switches HE as a smart player does, and there you go. He did a lot more significant damage on me. So right now, it looks like the Petro is going to get burned down or even focused down, down and really nothing more. He's pretty much out of the game. And, yep, that's that's how the cookie crumbles there. And he's got his radar, unfortunately, oh, unable to use it to be any kind of effect. So right there is the power of what the vampire and concentrated focused fire can do on a flank. You know, notice that the enemy team is chasing down our ships down at Bravo, and Kremlin is probably going to run away because there is a destroyer that could potentially torp the crap out of him. So really, at this point, I look at the point lead. This is all about situational awareness. I definitely encourage people to look up at the top of the screen. Look at we're 885. We don't need to hard push this. You can win on points. Even if they cap a point, the, our score timer says we're going to win within a minute or so and if we take out this battleship it will actually help tick up our points even faster so it's a good idea to know when you need to win when you need to pause when you need to hold when you need to actually maybe hard push yolo push whatever that may be so again it's all about communication knowing the game knowing the system and having that ability to know what your surroundings and the gameplay is at look up the scoreboard sometimes look at the mini map and understand what that can do at this point uh, we're using the heels to heal up everybody, and we're just going to go ahead and focus fire down the Ohio. Now, again, um, what I talked about, again, is the oh, the positioning of the battleship in the back and um, just how we did an overall push of Charlie Cap, taking the caps right off that, um, holding them for a long period of time. So we get the points ticking off right up off the bat. We get the, the hold the caps the longest we can, and then, of course, we're going to focus down everybody one by one, and at that point, the team just cannot survive that amount of points being uh, ticked up and everything and so forth. So it's really, really difficult. And you're going to see us get a mine kill right here. So the mines are very, very powerful. Drop the whole minefield on the Ohio, which is... Honestly, it's annoying because now they got to maneuver the ship, shoot and aim and maneuver and shoot and aim. So it's very you kind of a, you got to do multiple here, things all at once. And of course, if you take a hit, it could flood uh, you. It me. could also cause significant that, damage. And you're going to notice we're going to actually get a kill with a mine uh, with the vampire, too. So right here is the power of the gun power of the uh, Vampire 2, yeah, and we're just going to literally aim at the superstructure, and look, he's even firing at us because we are the biggest threat on the board to him. And that's what you want to be as a good destroyer player. You want to be a bigger threat than the cruiser and the battleship. If you have a player that literally treats the destroyer like that as the biggest threat on the team, then you've got it made in the shade because literally the, all the battleships and crews are going to do is focus on you sacrificing their shots and their attention uh, to you rather than your teammates. And that's the name of the game, the goal of a good destroyer player, and that's why I enjoy the role because you are so, uh, I would say, battlefield effective that it's really, really difficult to um, overcome that kind of play style. So I wonder if he fired at us again. No, he kind of, I think he almost did. But anyways, uh, we're just going to burn down this guy. And there's nothing the Ohio can do, although it is a very, very tanky battleship. Unfortunately, this is uh, the meta today. Burn you down, tarp you down, and hopefully he hits a mine. Does he hit a mine? Yep, there it is. There's a mine kill right there. Vampire 2. So effective. So as always, hope you guys enjoy the video. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the strategy. What is what could have been done better on that side for the enemy team, and uh, what could we do better? And as always, hope you guys enjoy it. And we'll we'll kind of um, I and mean, we went we actually were in the struggle to qualify for storm. It was pretty fun. Nice job. But as always, you guys have a great time. Make sure if you see me out there, say hi and enjoy the build at the end of the video as well. You guys take care, and we'll see you soon. Cheers. No, we're in storm. We're going yeah, so storm. Gale, so this should be storm, right? Uh, I gotta go for a few minutes, guys. I might come back later. I don't know. We'll see. Hey, appreciate it. No problem. Yeah. See ya. Does this mean I get to play? Who's that?